Since 1967, Stroud Water Research Center has focused on one thing, fresh water. By advancing knowledge and stewardship of freshwater systems through global research, education, and watershed restoration. Learn more at stroudcenter.org. For generations, American farmers prepared their fields by tilling, a process that churns the soil, leaving it vulnerable to wind and water, erosion, and the loss of valuable nutrients. But now, scientists and farmers are working together, finding innovative ways to keep streams and rivers unpolluted and to turn what we think of as dirt into water-retaining, nutrition-packed soil. My name's Jamie Hicks and I farm with my cousin. We farm just a little over 5,000 acres. Half of it's row crops, which means corn, soybeans, wheat, and the other half is hay production. So in traditional agriculture, once this crop was harvested, whether or not it's corn or soybeans, uh, the ground would then have been plowed using a chisel plow, which is, you know, it could go anywhere from eight to 10 inches in depth. So then you have all this open soil that's exposed. If soil is left exposed, then any nutrients and fertilizers that were added will be washed away into the streams that border Jamie's field, along with a good share of his hard-earned profits. And so he's turned to a non-traditional kind of farming that not only holds soil and water in place, it creates a breeding ground for life-sustaining organic matter. It's called cover cropping. A cover crop is a crop that you're not necessarily planning to harvest any grain off of. The idea is to always have a crop growing that, to hold the soil, hold the nutrients, prevent erosion and everything. And, and so as we have this crop growing, we're starting the next crop. So those two crops will kind of overlap and, and the ground will always be protected. That's the goal. Here's how it works. Today, Jamie is planting cereal rye in one of his soybean fields. Over the next several weeks, those seeds will germinate and begin to grow. When the soybeans are harvested in a couple of months, the cereal rye will have firmly taken root and will protect the soil and its nutrients during the harsher winter months ahead. And finally, when the cereal rye dies, it's absorbed into the earth like compost and over time becomes rich, healthy soil. So take a shovel full here. See how it doesn't really stick together? It's just real fine. It just breaks apart in your hands and you kind of see all the root structure in there and that breaks down and that's, you know, that could have nutrients in it. When that starts breaking down, that releases into the crop that we're growing. Beyond nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, no crop can grow without water. In fact, not a single one of Jamie's 5,000 acres is irrigated, meaning that his crops rely on naturally occurring rainfall. Studying how that rainfall is retained by cover crops, but how that very same water might pose a threat to nearby streams and creeks is the life's work of geomorphologist Melinda Daniels. So a fluvial geomorphologist is interested in the movement of water and sediment from watershed hill slopes into stream systems and river systems, and then how both the water and the sediment moves through those river systems and the landforms that are created in the process. To support her work, Dr. Daniels has essentially turned a nearby cornfield into an outdoor laboratory. With the help of a carefully designed flume, she can capture runoff generated by an overnight storm. What she finds by testing that water will be helpful to both scientists and farmers. There's a couple of things to be concerned about in this runoff. Number one is nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, because if those make it all the way to the streams, um, those are, it's like pouring fertilizer into the stream and that causes algal blooms, it causes low oxygen concentration. It, it's basically a pollutant for the stream. So from the stream perspective, we're worried about nutrients. But the farmer also ought to be concerned about nutrients because that's their investment in the field. They pay money to buy fertilizer to put in their crop fields. And if it all runs off, it's money, their money washing off the field at the same time. 
On any given day, you'll find Dr. Daniels and her team conducting experiments involving water and soil, like this one that measures the amount of sediment and pollutants generated by different kinds of ground cover. It's all part of a growing alliance between science and the farming community. They're really the stewards of the land in our watershed where we have our research operating. They are responsible for farming the watershed. They manage the land. They're the ones controlling the land cover in the watershed and determining what's washing off into our streams and rivers. And so by cooperating with them, we're able to experimentally treat different fields. They're very interested in the research that we're doing because they see the potential benefit to their farming operations. I think that there's, there's a lot of farmers doing the same thing today, you know, just because we're, we're looking at the soil. I mean, that's basically where we're making our money from. So the more that we can retain our soil, build healthier soil, the better crops that we'll harvest in the fall.